Hey guys, Danny Johnson here. Today I just wanted to make a quick video of what's underneath the hood of a Terminator and how to basically uh, point it out and so you know what you're looking for if you have to go and change the sensor or just in case you want to know what everything's for. So this will be pretty basic and uh, we'll just start talking here up front. We're going to first go over what uh, this is. It's the expansion tank. This is for the coolant system of the car. So this has uh, radiator fluid in it, you could call it, or coolant. And uh, basically as the fluid circulates through the engine and through the front radiator, there's uh, an expansion tank that that fluid will go to um, and basically then go back into the system. And as you see, it has a little uh, cap on it with a pressure rating and you, you, know, you don't want to open that when it's hot. Now, what confuses people is on the stock Terminator, there's another one right next to it. I have an aftermarket one, and it looks almost identical. It has a cap that's similar, with just a little bit lower of a PSI rating, and that is for the supercharger system. So the supercharger system um, actually has its own coolant, and um, both of them run coolant, so you would think that they're connected or the same, but they're actually two entirely different separate systems. So one is for the engine itself, one is for only the coolant going to uh, cool the supercharger system. And so um, up front you have two different radiators for that, and uh, anyway, just uh, that's those are the uh, expansion tanks. Coming over here we'll start to in with the intake. Normally you just have an air box here with a filter. This car has one that goes into the fender so it's a little bit different in that respect but uh, this is where the air is uh, starting to go into the engine. Uh, right here this is to call the mass airflow meter, the MAF, and uh, basically it's measuring how much air is being drawn into the engine and it can help the engine um, make changes with uh, fuel and everything so that uh, it can run smoothly and know how much uh, air the engine's breathing so therefore how much fuel and all that to add. This car has a Mafia uh, mass airflow extension and basically uh, it plugs into here and allows the car to um, read a higher amount of airflow because uh, when you have an aftermarket blower like this one it will peg the system pretty quick. Uh, right here, this is the air intake temperature sensor, and uh, basically this is the ambient air. This is the air as it's first coming into the uh, engine system, and as I'll show you later, there's a secondary one, and uh, this is what had thrown a lot of people off when they uh, go to supercharge their own cars. There's only has one of these, and so like my brother, for example, when he supercharges bullet, he had to extend this to go up a little bit higher to get a more accurate reading. But uh, anyway, I'll show you a sensor like that a little bit later. This right here is the uh, little box that has uh, the, the um, relay for the intercooler pump. Uh, so basically, the car's cooling system is run off of the water pump. And then for the supercharger cooling system, there's an electric pump that it uses to circulate the coolant. And so that's actually here in the fender. You can't really see it, but I do have a video on replacing it if you want to see that and also a video on um, testing it. So coming up the air intake here you also have this little line here and what it's doing is venting the pressure in the cam covers. Okay a lot of people call them valve covers but some people also call it the uh, cam covers because they technically cover the cams. It's an overhead cam engine. But uh, anyway um, basically uh, you have cam covers on each side and uh, this is venting some of that pressure and the problem is it's also sucking oil and when it does that so there's pre-filters like this that you can buy there's catch can systems there's little baby filters that just poke into it and you cap this off and there's all different things that you can do to change that but uh, anyway that's what that is coming up a little higher next we hit the throttle body so as you may know when you hit the gas pedal it opens up a blade here and as that blade opens, it allows you know air to go into the engine. And um, on top of this, you have the IAC, the idle air control valve. And it's very similar to a throttle body. It's like a baby throttle body. So as the car's idling, it helps the car uh, make small adjustments uh, because the throttle body itself would be too big and 
clunky to move around to get it just right, so that's kind of what that is. Over here on the side of the throttle body is the throttle position sensor, and so its function is to basically um, tell the computer how much throttle you're giving when uh, you know when you're putting your foot down. And so that helps out quite a bit. Uh, over here, you have the main body type harness here that plugs in, and then from here it goes down into the dashboard and into the car. Uh, from outside here, it's going all over the place. Uh, this is your fuel line coming into the engine, and um, basically the, it will meet into the fuel rail. So we'll talk about that next. This metal tube that goes all the way around and down the other side is carrying your fuel, and it will go down into these uh, fuel injectors. There are eight of them, and that's what these are all plugging into. You have your harness plugging into all the fuel injectors, which is giving the engine uh, the fuel. Uh, right here, this is the cruise control cable. So when you set your cruise control, it's basically helping set the throttle body at a certain place so that you can maintain the same uh, speed. Uh, coming around here, um, basically this is called the EGR or the exhaust gas recirculation. So that metal tube right there, basically you have a tube that's coming off of the exhaust and as unburned fuel exits, the idea is that some of that unburned fuel will float back up and get sucked back into the engine to be reburned again. And so basically it's an emissions thing and it has some other pieces to it over here and over here. And it's just a, a system of vacuum. You have little vacuum tubes coming off that same uh, pole and everything like that. Um, then uh, here's the piece that's really somewhat difficult to find, but right there, that's the IAT2, or the secondary air intake temperature um, sensor. And so um, it's one thing to know how much air is, or what the temperature of the air is as it goes in the intake, but after it's being compressed into the supercharger, uh, that's called the charge temp, or, and uh, that's something that you really need to know so that the car can pull timing and uh, run safely and so anyway it, the car has a secondary uh, sensor to measure temperature and so that's where that that's where that one is and it measures a few other things too but it's most commonly known for uh, measuring the uh, air temperature the charge temperature um, coming back here you have another line that's leaving and goes into the cam cover on this side just like the other one did and its purpose is also to vent that pressure. I have mine hooked up to a catch can to catch some of that oil so it doesn't go back into the engine. Uh, coming forward here, this is the FRPS, or the Fuel Rail Pressure Sensor. And so basically it's uh, monitoring the fuel pressure on the rail and if those go out, uh, they can be quite problematic and the car can crank and not start or run rough or quit. So um, a lot of people want to carry another one of those just in their glove box for, for fun uh, so they don't get stranded. Coming out front here this is the crossover tube for the coolant and it, you can see it goes into a big radiator thing here and the idea here is uh, you can take this cap off and it's a higher point if you look at where it sits on the engine it's kind of higher up so you can burp the cooling system by letting it uh, letting the air escape at the highest point. So um, these strip very often, so if uh, <laughs> if you still have it like I do, it'd be a good idea to get the little quarter inch drive, put it down in there and break that sucker off to unscrew it and put a new one on. Um, over here, this is the power steering reservoir and it just mounts right here for the power steering system. And um, this is the supercharger itself, of course and um, basically as it spins it's you know compressing air between rotors and giving you some um, more boost pressure to make more horsepower. Now the thing about the Terminator is it has two different belt systems. It may look like it only has the one here but it has an outer belt and an inner belt if you can see it right there. So the outer belt controls Basically, it just has the crankshaft at the, at the bottom. There's an outer crank pulley, and it's powering the alternator and the supercharger. The rest of these are just idlers, so they just spin. It's just a way of routing the, routing the belt to make it work. 
and there's also a tensioner. This is an aftermarket thump RRR tensioner, um, but there's also a tensioner for that system. On the inside, for the other belt, that's uh, powering the power steering fluid, the air conditioning, the water pump, which is in the middle, and um, then it has some idlers there too. Uh, over here, of course, is the battery. Uh, then you have a little fuse panel here that has some other things in there. And uh, this is just a big wire that I added for an upgraded alternator. And I don't know if you can see that alternator down in there or not. Probably not from here. Big chromed out McMahon one, but anyhow, um, I think that was pretty much it. Uh, this is the brake master cylinder reservoir here for your brakes, and then more EGR stuff here at the top. So, anyway, that's uh, just a quick walk around of some of the main sensors that you have in here. I'm sure I forgot a few, so put them in the comments and let me know which ones I've forgotten and why they're important. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys.